Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in today's we're going to look at some common shots that you might be playing wrong and I'm going to give you some extra tips that'll really help with your consistency. Right, so shot number one that we're going to look at is the stun shot. Now I would say that most people feel like they know how to play a stun shot. They think, okay, I need to hit the white just below centre and I've got to hit the ball reasonably firm to get that little bit of a stun, hit through it and the white stops and I get that stun effect. Now here's a couple of things that people may do wrong on that shot. I hear this very commonly that people think on a stun shot you don't push the cue all the way through. You stop a little bit short and that's how you get the cue ball to stop. So when I've got this stun shot here, what players do is you might see them do that with their action. So you see that the hand almost pulls back a little bit and they stop short and they think that's what helps to make the white stun. Now that is not actually the case. The white is controlled by where you hit on it and power. Nothing else is going to control the white. The white doesn't know whether you've done this little bit of special technique. So you want to still make sure that you've pushed all the way through the cue ball. If I use this as a a marker here. Let's get a stun shot and watch how far my cue goes through the white. So I'm trying to get this stun and then so we see the way the white has stopped and you can see the way my cue has gone right the way through the ball. I've completed the shot properly and it's purely controlled by where I'm hitting on the white and how hard. Now with that in mind here's a massive tip for stun shots. Most people think that a stun shot is purely just below centre and you have to hit the ball as I say reasonably firm but you can actually create a stun shot by hitting anywhere below centre on the white and then it all comes down to how hard you're hitting the shot. So I play a lot of my stun shots by actually hitting very low down and quite soft. So if I go right the way down to the bottom of the ball here and then not very hard, can you now see the way I've still got that stun effect but you almost hear the way it sounded a bit more high pitched because I'm right at the bottom of the white ball and I've managed to get that effect by hitting much, much softer. So I'll just show you that again there, and this is very useful because all of a sudden it means you'll have much better cue control. We're trying to push our cue through in a straight line, and if we can do it a lot slower with more control, then it really helps to yeah, build up that consistency with your cue delivery. So nice and low, push through, not too hard, and you hear that there's no sound of the red hitting the back of the leather. So a couple of good tips there. You must push through. Don't fall into that trap of, I hear a lot of people in clubs saying, you don't push right the way through the white and that's how you create a stun. You must push through and also think about going lower and softer for extra control. Right now shot number two is when we want to generate maximum topspin. We want to get the white really zipping after it hits the object ball and get a lot of movement out the white so we can go around the table. Sometimes you might have to go in and out of bulk or sometimes you're just trying to maybe split reds but you've got to generate a lot of topspin. Now what a lot of players do accidentally here is they don't realise on a shot like this that they actually get a little bit of a stun effect. So when I've hit the white there, it's got a little bit of a stun effect. It hasn't gone zipping. You haven't really got that, that pure timing on the white that's made it really go and accelerate after it hits the object ball. So there's two things you have to do here. You've got to hit very high and commit to that high point on the white. So I've got to try and hit very, very high. And I do that by raising my the knuckles of my bridge here and also what I'm always very conscious of is get the back end of your cue down a little bit so that the cue is nice and flat because if you're cueing down on the ball like this you waste some of the energy cueing down into the table and you're almost making the white bounce a little bit which causes a that little bit of a stun effect that 10% stun reaction so here I've got to get my bridge raised up so I'm right at the top of the white and then get my cue flat at the back and then I've got to use a nice backswing so that I can generate the speed and go right through the top of the white. And you see that time, the white has absolutely zipped in comparison. It's really, really accelerated forward. Now, the last thing you've got to do is be careful that you're not just trying to use pure strength here. You're not trying to just go absolutely maximum power when you hit this shot. You want to make sure that you're building the speed of the cue up smoothly and doing it with a little bit of timing. So, difficult to put into words in it timing. I've done a video on that before, but I've got to make sure that, yeah, when I do my feathers, I've done all my aiming checks, everything looks good, and then I'll pull the cue back, and then I'll go right through it nice and smoothly, and that's what generates all that extra topspin. So if you're getting the white going a little bit wide when it comes off the object ball, or you just feel like 
the white is dying a little bit, you've got to try going that little bit higher, build the speed up smoothly, get that cue flat, and then you'll generate that maximum top spin reaction. Now, this next shot is probably one of the hardest shots in the game. We're going to look at the, the stun run through. Now, it's a very useful shot. And again, a shot that players get wrong because they think that, again, they don't need to push through too far because then the cue ball is going to run away from them. But that's not the case here. So if I just play a nice stun run through, so I'm going to get the, the white to just run through a little bit after it hits the red. So we see that nice stun run through there. And we can see my tip has finished past this cue ball here. So I've accelerated nicely through the white. So that's the first thing. Just like the stun shot at the beginning of this video, you have to go right the way through the cue ball when you're playing these stun run through shots. Now, a stun run through is dictated by a few factors come into it. So the distance between the white and the object ball, that changes where you will need to hit up and down because depending on the distance, if you're very close to the ball, then there's not much time for the stun effect to run out. But if you go further away from the object ball, there's plenty of time for the, the stun effect to have run out by the time the white has traveled all the way to the red and then it will just turn into a normal roll through shot and you won't get that tiny element of stun that we need. Then the other thing you've got to experiment with is where exactly on the white do you need to hit? So I'm going to try here half a tip below centre and I'm going to hit at about the five power in my mind. So what I think is about a five power, just half a tip below. And actually, so I've gone right through to my chest, hit the shot and that's actually caused just a normal stun reaction. So that's no good. So I'd say, OK, if I hit that hard, about a five power again, and then I go half a tip higher, so I'm going right to the centre of the cue ball now. So I'm right in the centre now, not quite as low. And if I don't feather the white over here right there, so yeah, I'm going right to the centre of the cue ball, and then play the shot. And we can see that time, I've just adjusted where I was on the white slide, and you can see the white has now moved forward past where it hit the red. So I've got that little bit of a stun run through effect. Let's try in my mind going better five pair again and I'll go one tip above center now. So let's try that, see what that does. So I'm not trying to hit at any different speeds. I'm just now one tip above center and then through the shot. And now can you see the way the white has still didn't go through with pure top spin, So it didn't follow into the pocket but it went through further because I'm just adjusting tiny amounts, the amount of stun that I'm getting on the white. So you need to experiment there with exactly how it feels in your own cue action, um, what heights you need and what power so that you generate that perfect amount of stun run through. And of course the heights will change depending on the distance between the white and the object ball like I talked about a moment ago. But again, remember that on that stun run through shot, you must push all the way through the cue ball and you're only controlling it purely based on how hard and exactly where the tip eventually ends up striking the cue ball. So now we're going to use the three shots we've talked about in this video in a realistic frame situation. So let's say I've got a red here and I want to play for the black. Now, if I hit this shot, I can do what I talked about at the beginning. So I know I've got to push through. This is a stun shot. I want to hold for the black. I can do it just below centre and hit it quite firm. So you hear the way the the ball hit the back of the leather. So I got that stun shot, but what I talked about earlier was hitting lower and softer. And that's always preferred because, yeah, you're just doing it a bit easier, a bit of better timing, and then you're not having to hit the ball as hard. So let's do it by going very low on the cue ball, almost like I'm playing a deep screw, but just not hard enough that it will cause a screw reaction. So I've still got to push through, but... And you hear that time that the white just... Yeah, it stopped nicely and the red didn't hit the back of the pocket. Again, if I was to come round here now and pop this black here, I can do exactly the same. Let's play it as a little stun, but I'm low on the cue ball and not too hard. And can you see the way there? I'm managing to just hit the ball very, very softly. Don't need to hit it too hard and it causes that little stun reaction. Those are very useful shots because we use them a lot all around the table when you've got things like the black here on the spot and then let's say I want to pop the black and drift past this red here up to there I don't I can't hit it too hard like a normal stun shot if I if I hit this shot and I play just below center and hard the white's going to find its stun line but it's going to come all the way up the table over there so I've got to hit lower and softer 
So this is very, very useful. When you've got these little angles, you're gonna hit lower on the ball, not too hard, and then you can see that, yeah, the white stun's passed. I'm nice and close to the next red. Got into that a little bit too much, arguably, there. But you can see the point that you wanna go lower and softer so that you can have that extra control and you can start to move the white around more delicately and with more ease. Now this one here is an example of generating maximum topspin that we talked about earlier. I've landed here on the black, I'm a little bit straight here and I want to bring the white round off the two cushions and onto these two reds here. I will use a trace of left hand side on this shot just so that when it hits these cushions it flicks round a little bit. Uh, but what players find here is if you don't generate maximum topspin, so you may pop the black but and then you'll find that, you see the way the white has died off this cushion and it's got stuck on the side cushion there, so it's not very good for landing on these, these two reds here. So what I need to do here instead is get make sure that I'm doing all those things that I talked about when I was talking about the top spin shot. I've got to get right to the top of the white, get my cue nice and flat, smoothly accelerate the cue so that I'm not causing any stun effect on the white. And I'll find that when I get that right, if I can time this shot nicely, the white will, you see the way the white has really zipped off the two cushions and round for the two reds. And it even felt there like I hit the shot a bit softer and smoother. So people sometimes think that when they're generating that maximum topspin effect, it's all about, you know, I've got to hit the ball really hard to get the white spinning. But if you can go smoothly, get that timing on there, and even when I did it powerfully on the earlier example, you've got to smoothly get the cue up to speed and that helps to get as much topspin as you can without any of the energy being wasted in a stun effect. Now this third example here, great example of the stun run through. So I've got a nice chance of this red here and I can easily get here from the, the red to the black. That'll leave me a nice chance to score. Now I don't want to risk rolling this ball because there's quite a bit of distance between the white and red. The white can easily roll off before it gets to the red. It's only got to hit a finger mark on the table, maybe a little bit of chalk dust. And also, you're just cueing the shot in a little bit of a negative way. It just means that you're having to be very tentative and careful with your cue delivery. So this is where you would see a player playing a stun run through. So I want to hit the red, nice and positive, get my cue right through the white. It's all about where I strike height wise and at what power that will cause the stun run through effect. So I think here, yeah, I've got to find the line. So I think just almost a quarter of a tick below centre and then push right through the white. So nice and confident. And then we see, yep, yeah, potted that ball, and you can see that the white has gone from where I marked the red here all the way through to here, leaving me a nice shot on the black. So you have to experiment there with the distances, how high or low you need to go on the cue ball and at what power. But don't be fooled into thinking that you've somehow not got to push through the cue ball. You've got to push through. As long as you hit the right point, you'll get that stun run through effect. So thanks a lot for watching everybody, I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did remember to give it a like, if you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing, that just really helps me to keep all these instructional videos coming regularly. For anyone that's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this very table helping players to improve their game all the time. So if you look in the description box below you'll see all my details there, get in touch and I'd love to help you personally with your game. And as always I'll catch you all in the next video, cheers.